and we're back welcome 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 to the bunker the secret bunker not the Hennagon bunker but the bunker in alice's bunker this is the place the infamous place well rumor has it that we're gonna be um shedding some light in the uh pentagon tonight yeah we will be <clears throat> but nothing happens until the toilet flushes well, my hands are watering here at toilet time tv so we will be initiating the traditional toilet the flush the royal flush here in three two one the flush has been initiated Glizzies. <laughs> now, is glizzies on your mind? <laughs> yes. Yeah, you can't stop it after that song uh -huh. initiates. Like data, we you know we initiate data. That song has initiated us trends. Trend seeker, man. That mic looks like it's going to cut you right in the throat. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a glizzy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hope everybody's side. doing great i want to welcome everybody back to toilet time we are glad to be back we enjoy your guys's comments your commentary everything you guys are writing we shout out to all of you guys i think now we're at like 5200 on facebook and we are still surprised that anybody's watching but we want to say thank you from the bottom of Alice's bunker hole. I think Spy Pigeon is one of our oldest Patreons. Yeah, and there's another one, uh, a soul, something soul. Let me let me look it up. <laughs> God. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's live. It's fine. <laughs> we just want to we want to thank you guys because you guys are all, always checking us out. Checking it twice, shaking it if it's naughty or nice. So why not give you guys a shout out? Uh, what's uh yeah, we have Spy Pigeon on there. Uh, there's the God MC. <laughs> there is Uncut Unfiltered. Who else we got on here? Um is the god oh, rotten soul that's what it was rotten soul always is on there too kaylee is, shout out is the god mc uh eminem is that the real shady slim i don't know there's Derek shields he says shout out he's actually shouting out to us shout out from arizona shout out the Derek shields yes, it snows a lot in arizona doesn't it there's uh, the city of God. Shout out to him in that city. <laughs> Sounds Catholic. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, we, we could spend all day with that, but we'd like to just say thank all of you guys. You guys are always faithful to watch and comment, and we appreciate it. And we have a jam-packed episode planned for you guys. Hope you guys are ready. We're going to be talking from the new... And infamous, and you can't go anywhere without hearing about it in the last week, Chat GPT, the secret military of the Pentagon, and the secret mysteries that are held within my colleague's tab. You're talking about the shotgun blaster? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because we, so we never know what's inside that thing. <laughs> oh, that thing, it's just, it's always cocked and loaded. It's just ready to go. It's a goodie bag. Yeah, it's... I often have I have to often let the cat out of the sack. That's okay. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that. But I hope you guys are ready. I hope you guys like my hat. Everybody was complaining about my beanie. People were wondering if it was stitched, knitted, whatever. So I decided to go with the uh, Stranger Things theme. And that guy, he was in like in that Russian gulag and <laughs> whatever. And I was like, you know, that's, that's, not, that's not a bad fit. So well, anyways, leading off on the show, 
What do you have in your wonder bag of goodies? A woman, uh, I believe in Texas, if I remember right, a woman came home to find her husband having sex with their dog. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you find this stuff? <laughs> the uh, rad team, they, they tell all. So they actually would send it to you? Yup. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's special token privileges, but... A tokenization. Yeah. Mm. It's non-refungible. That's good. Um, Yeah. That dog, uh, he got a bone that he wasn't looking for that day, and he didn't have to go digging too deep. Well, tell us more about it. So what was going on with the backstory? Well, that's it. Now he's uh, being charged with... Um, Indecent exposure and uh, was it some kind of animal sexual uh, discharge or something like that? How did they prove that he was doing this? Well, the woman caught him and she started beating him up. I guess she called the police immediately and the police came and. Uh, but how did they know? What I well, how, how did does it not just hearsay? I like, did she film it? They don't. They didn't give that information. So I don't know. That's complicated. I mean, if he was really doing something like that, sure, you know, he needs to, he needs to get his recompense. But, um, yeah, he got his. Just but there's desserts. a lot of people who get charged or has accusations held against them, but it's not necessarily real. It's just people, you know, accusing people of things, and that's one of those heinous things. Like you don't want to be charged with messing around with your family pet yeah well <clears throat> apparently he uh was messing around he was 38 years old it was in florida not texas i think texas has seen enough yeah, especially those houston yeah bars i i was a little confused i thought the man which is what i would have done if i was in his shoes any sane person after they did the deed the sane person would have pled not guilty in court and they would have pled like they would have said i identify as a dog and he would have got a scot free yeah that's that's a new angle that's you know people may have to be prepared for that so yeah it's like look judge I, we were just practicing doggy style and well they were just satisfying their itch their natural primitive function. Yeah. I don't know. That's a tough one. I can feel it in the air right now. Xenophobia. This is going to be one of those weird episodes. <laughs> you know, the last time we did a lot, uh, because we're recording at night, believe it or not. It's always night over here, but anytime we record at night, it always has that weird, and I can feel it. It has this weird, I don't care to the next level vibe. I can feel it coming in the air tonight. Oh, Lord. Well, this, see, I work hard so my dog can have a better life. Do you have a dog? Not anymore. Did you ever? Yes, but not anymore. Well, according to many, the college essay is dead. Nobody is prepared for how AI will transform academia. Chat GPT. Well, that's pretty neurotic. Yeah, Chat GPT. I don't think you can go on TikTok. I don't think you can go on TikTok <laughs> right now without hearing somebody talking about how. How much they are shocked at how efficient and well integrated this chat AI is with human dialogue and a way to make comprehension of very complex things at a more simplistic or understandable level for the general public. It's, it's different than what you would experience like on Google. So let's say you have a question, like if you ask Google, what is an example of... 
a color. It's just going to give you a bunch of websites. And then you have to go through those websites, dig through the data and find the information. Well, this thing, if you ask it, it's just going to tell you the information. It's not going to tell you to go search nothing. It's like, what is an example of color? It's going to say, well, a color is a spectrum and this and this. It's going to just define it all. And it's just going to give you the answer. You don't have to go searching through websites. You don't have to waste your time. It's just here it is. This thing is going to revolutionize search. And so let's say that if you ask Google, help me write a essay on whatever, it's going to give you a bunch of websites and you have to go through the website. You have to learn about this stuff. But if you ask this chat AI, write an essay on whatever, it just will. What if I ask it to make me filthy rich? Well, if you ask it something specific, like give me the top five ways on how to become rich. It yeah, it's will. gonna do things like drink more Ovaltine. Yeah, but then the what you can do stuff. is you can add on that. It's like you said to drink more Ovaltine. Can you tell me a specific way to turn drinking Ovaltine into making money? And then it's gonna give you a detailed way. And then you can add on details to details. So then it gives you the details on that. Then you say, Can you tell me more details on this detail within that detail? Can you tell me how to sell my body in a profitable way? Yeah, it will. That's what I'm saying. This is a lot different than what people are experiencing on search engines. Like on search engines, they just give you websites and you have to do your own research. What if I leaned in and told it, get sexy? They'll probably give that default answer. I'm just an AI bot. I don't have a belief or those kinds of proclivities. Well, that's okay. That doesn't stop anybody. Anyways, it is It is. To me, it's very interesting. It takes all this ex the second layer of work out of the the equation. You don't have to go searching for this information. It will just directly tell you the information up front. So you don't have to waste your time anymore doing all this web searching. You just get it right there, right now. Solve world hunger. Write an essay about solving world hunger. Write uh, Python code. Write, uh, Write about how you have free will. Yeah, and right. That's one of the world problems. Yeah, right about volition comparative to non volition. Is it conditional or non conditional? I mean, if there's a fine line, then at least we know something to where there's two, there's a dichotomous nature now. You I can study 100% this one or 100% this yeah, one. You don't ever have to touch the other. I don't one. believe you can ever prove that because I don't think there, I don't see the world in, in full, in a full dichotomy. I see the world in a continuum, like a slider. You know, it, it moves up and down, but that doesn't mean it's on and off binarily. It's just a different amount of something. It's just a different amount of something, which means it can be loud to one and quiet to another, but in the middle, it's the same. It's just one is closer to the sound and one is farther away from the sound. That doesn't mean the sound is different. It could be the same loudness from the original source of the sound, but depending on you and your location to the sound, you are now receiving or perceiving the sound differently. That doesn't actually mean there's a different level in sound. It's just you are in different, a different time and space comparative to the origination of the sound. Yeah, like if you're really far away, you may think there's no sound. But there really is a sound. You're just too far away. But somebody really close to the sound will say, this sounds really loud. So the sound itself is neutral. It's your perception or relation to the sound that causes your reality to fluctuate. So it's not so much as binary as much as it's relative. That was last week's thing, analog matrix. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm sure people can understand what I'm saying. Yes. It, this, a lot of things in life is relative. The, there's an objective truth, but your perception is relative to the perception. So, uh, you yeah. know, anyways. Yeah. Like, like nobody, nobody outside of the bunker hole can hear us talking, but you and I know we're talking. And it's because you and I are relative to the sound that it's real, but everybody else it's they're not relative that doesn't mean our sound's not real they're just not in the perception of our of the source the closer you are to the source the more it becomes real the farther you're away from the source the more you deny its existence yeah, like haters well anything in life that just goes to anything like some people believe they have the truth that's because they're close to something they believe is a source and the ones who never experienced that source they're going to say what truth are you talking about same thing goes for light or sound, anything. Experience in life is 
a combination between your relativity to the source of the experience and people's ability to be a source of evidence or a collaboration to etch the idea that you're not a sole experiencer of it. So you don't think you're going crazy. You have other people who experience it as well, which validates your experience. Or you're going to become that crazy person who said, oh yeah, yesterday I saw Mickey Mouse over here swissing the cheese. But you may be the only one that saw that and you're going to become seen as a crazy person. But if multiple people see it, well, then it doesn't become, it's relative to the listener, but at least you have something to quantify your relativeness. So Einstein was right. For now. Thank you for that confirmation. We're still looking for a unified, uh, a unified theory. We still haven't figured out how to combine our, the theory of uh, gravity and quantum physics. So we're still looking for a unified theory. So we're not there yet. We're still meddling with the quantum hexagon. <laughs> what else is on your tab I told you this is going to be that weird night I can feel it <laughs> every time we do these late night episodes something weird happens well um, this one guy uh, apparently he found mercury on his floor <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why it's like he found Morgan on his flyer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I... <laughs> yeah, he found little balls of mercury on his floor. Did they figure out where it came from? He didn't say. Um, he said that this is why I never vacuum. He, that should be the reason why he vacuums. <laughs> I think he's trying to hint that it's actually coming out of his vacuum. But if I mean, he never, it looks like solder. But if he never vacuums, then it can't come from his vacuum. Yeah, I guess. And maybe he just doesn't want it going into his vacuum and then going onto the air. Like but how Mercury did he get does. there to begin with? Mercury's just not those things you just tread in with dirt or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like just randomly out there in the earth, just sitting around everybody grabbing well, where Mercury. Where else did it come from? Oh, well, that's why I'm asking you. It's not like a common thing. Like everybody's finding Mercury in their carpet. Maybe it came out of his blood sample or something. I don't know. I mean, they do have some inside your thermostat if you got those old thermostats oh yeah maybe one of his kids busted one yeah but that's what i'm saying you would know that it's like come on man this and, and another thing is how does he know it's mercury because well, you can tell it's uh just by looking at it it's that's mercury i could tell too i can spot that a mile away hey, you know it wasn't solder i've seen that before how do you know it's not like silver <clears throat> well, it's not hot or anything, but it, you can tell it's like some kind of metallic. How do you know it's just not melted silver or tin or aluminum foil or anything else? It can't be anything else. It, the only possible thing could be is mercury. Anyways, okay, fine. So he has mercury on his floor. We don't know where it came from. He magically knows it's mercury, even though he doesn't know what he's talking about. He says it might be from his vacuum, but he never vacuums, so... Where did you hear about this? <laughs> she jumping. <laughs> that reminds me, you she know, jumping. I think five states now have officially banned TikTok from uh, state owned cell phones and it's starting to get more rampant. They are really believing that TikTok is a security threat and yeah, because people are finding mercury in the carpet. Well, and they, they no, no, it just reminds it. me it's because of stuff like this. <laughs> well, they, I remember a long time ago, not only did the government put anthrax in our mailboxes, but they put mercury in our blood. And my my brother had to pay dearly. Carvana stock collapses amidst bankruptcy fears after creditors pat another $1 price target. So I don't know if you guys know, but Carvana was one of the largest used car online services, and they have been spiraling out of nowhere. Why? I used to like them. Like, I, I haven't seen their commercials in a while. Is that why? What's interesting about the Carvana dropping is that this is a clear sign for all those who have been waiting to get a, de a good deal on their car. Wait till next year sometime when, when they have to... Because if they, they're filing bankruptcy, 
And once it all gets subtle out, they have to satisfy their debt. And so what the creditors are going to want them to do is sell all their used cars to pay back the creditors. And they're going to have to sell it for pennies on the dollar. To sell. They're going to do it as fast as they can. So this is going to cause a massive inflow into the used car mar- market, which is going to cause car used car prices to drop tremendously. So if you are looking for a car next year, early next year will be a prime time because you know, the used car market was ridiculous this past year. But if you waited it out, you're going to be able to find yourself a good deal come the beginning of next year because the market is going to be flooded with used cars. Because I think Carvana has like $4 billion or $7 billion of used car inventory, and they're going to have to liquidate it to pay back these creditors. Next year. Yeah, the beginning. Well, it's going to start happening now, but next year's just around the corner. We're, we're in December now. We don't even know if the world is going to exist next year. Uh, we're going to be here till at least 2030. They've been propagating 2030 so much. It'd be a it'd be a shame if we couldn't experience it. And not if Cargill has something to say about it. Well, I mean, I'm even anxious. It's like they push 2030 so hard. I want to at least see what the what the big deal's all about. I don't think they're going to let any of us see that. Only the elites will be able to see that year. Well, I think they want us to see it because they're the ones that want us to charge us carbon tax. They're going to want us to charge us rent because we're not going to own anything anymore and like it. You know, they're going to want us to experience 2030. Do you think that Elon Musk and his glizzy is trying to impress people like us? He's actually trying to impress other people like him. Well, I don't know what he's trying to do lately. I don't know if you've heard of the Twitter files, but yes. Yeah. That really seems like he's not trying to impress a lot of people. Well, I'm saying like he's, if, Whatever the elites have going on in 2030, they're not trying to impress or get our repertoire. What's the whole point of rent without us? They're Them, not going to be the, charging the other the elites. They're they're all trying to keep up with the Joneses in their own neighborhood. If everybody acts like Elon and just lives in fifty thousand dollar houses and sell all their property, there's nobody going to be charging rent. That's how they want it. Like all the Bill Gates out there want to kill us off with these mosquito patties. And then they want to take over the rest of the world. Well, it just seems like he wants to kill off people who are prone to that. He's not trying to kill Americans. He's trying to kill off the the most vulnerable to this stuff, which are people, unfortunately, in third world countries. Like West Africa. Yeah. And that seems real biased and racist. And he's not trying to kill off Americans. He's trying to kill off these third world countries. So, no, I think he the objective is... There's a lot more sinister than that, but it's not going to be because they want to live by themselves with just a thousand billionaires. If that was the point, then buying all this real estate with BlackRock BlackRock is pointless because BlackRock is buying up all the real estate and their whole reason. So BlackRock buys all this real estate and half of their real estate, they keep vacant. Nobody's in it. And half of it they rent and they rent it at double, triple the rate. And the reason why is because they say there's no houses for rent. And the reason why they won't rent out other half of the houses so they can tell people there's no houses to rent, because if there's more houses, you have to drop the price, supply and demand. But if there is no houses available, you can charge whatever you want. So that's what they do. They buy all the houses, half of them they don't, they just say is not vacant, but there's nobody in it because they make more money charging three times the rent than charging one, one for one rent. Like if you have three houses and you can charge 10 times the rent for this one house, it'd be cheaper to say nobody live in these houses, charge 10 times the rent for that house than charging three times three rent at single rate. Yeah, but <clears throat> all the squatters, if they get wind of this, then, you know, they're supporters of Blue Rock. The blue rock flowing through space. Well, there's black rock and black stone. Yeah, this blue rock flowing through space, they're for that. And they're going to go settle in these houses for free. And then they're the winners in the end. Apparently, Walmart CEO Doug McMillan says that he will have to be laying off thousands of employees. And you, you know, when I first read that, I thought, oh, it's because of inflation. Oh, it's because of low profits. It's because of Cargill. No, it's because he says too many people are shoplifting. 
So he's going to blame his desire to reduce the overhead of employment to shoplifters. Yeah, it's their it's it's the employee's fault. In an interview today, CEO Doug McMillan indicates that he would be in the running to lay off a mass group of workers because there has been a mass amount of shoplifting crimes specifically organized within retail theft. Each store location has security measures in place. Who cares? Anyways, the whole point I'm trying to make is Walmart can own up and say, you know, we just want to save a buck and we don't want to have all these employees because of inflation or whatever or low profit margins. We're going to blame it on you. Well, it sounds like the only one that's lifting shop is Mac Millen. Wasn't isn't Ma, isn't McMillan part of the Mac the uh, or is that Mac Millen? Uh, no. <laughs> I can't remember if the Gill family is with the Mac Gills. Probably the McDonalds. <laughs> <laughs> The task force has some success since since its inception. It has recovered merchandise value at nearly twenty six million dollars. Competitors like Target have also seen major increases in retail theft. The company recently reported four hundred million more losses, four hundred million more in losses than last year. So, anyways, they're going to blame it all on shoplifting crimes. So, if you lose your job this year and you don't get your Christmas bonus. They're going to say it's because of shoplifters. You know, this is going to cause this is going to cause the employees themselves once they walk out of Walmart, they're going to come right back in, grab a cart and shoplift themselves and then they're going to go have a happy holiday. Yeah, well whatever they're doing, they're not going to have a job. <laughs> <laughs> And you know, Merry Christmas to them. And Walmart is going to blame the people who are swapping their old Nikes for work boots. After they're done shoplifting, the ex-employees, now disgruntled, they're going to re-upload and resell on the internet. What are you talking the about? <laughs> <laughs> they're going to make an income from that. It's actually going to come in. The income. I don't know if you guys have heard, but today, Brittany Griner, the ex-WNBA player who was sentenced to 10 years in Russia for having a illegal contraband for having marijuana in, in Russia, I think it was like a vape fluid or some sort, they sentenced her to 10 years. In Russia. In Russia. With love. With, you know, that old uh, Stranger Things gulag. <laughs> Is the, was she actually there with the monster? I don't know. But apparently today, Biden decided to make a deal with the Russian government. They were wanting a, a prominent arms dealer and for this trade they would release. Was his name Barabbas? I'm not sure. It says something here. I don't think it says. It says the absurd nine-year sentence that Griner received for, for, for possession of a few canisters of cannabis oil appeared to be a clear effort by Russian President Putin to gain leverage, and it seemed to have worked. In exchange for her, the U.S. sent back to Russia one of the world's deadliest arm dealers who was serving a 25 years serving 25 years for crimes, including the targeting of American citizens. An espionage. So... They made this trade. Speaking of freedom, one of the greatest freedoms is the right to protest. Griner and every American can and should protest if they see injustice, such as abuse of police power against blacks or anyone. But by making the national anthem the, the symbol of their protest, Griner painted the whole of America as the source of these abuses. The same America that has now sacrificed so that she could come home, states this news article. So if she still feels some type of way about the Star Spackled Banner, are they going to ship her back to where she came from? No, you know. Back to the fatherland? The beauty of America is you can protest. 
Yeah. Well, that's, yeah. Christina Kochikoff. Anyways, I just wanted to put it out there for anybody who was following the story. She is now back home and hopefully she is grateful for the great United States that has saved her from the grips of the Russian bear. We sent her a gift basket, right? We sent her a gift card for $35 a Target. Excellent. Welcome back. With love. From Russia, with love, yeah. No, from the great red, white, and eagles. Go to your cough. Anyways, do you have anything else on your tap? Yes, I do. <clears throat> um, Before you say anything, I won't have enough time to go deep into it this week, but I did say a little bit about it in the earlier broadcast. There is a secret U.S. military army that the Pentagon has, and they are conducting warrantless surveil- survey. Survey. They are conducting warrantless watches and searches of Americans. And I'm not sure if you guys know who I'm talking about, but the program is called the Signature Reduction Program. It's the secret army of the Pentagon. We'll probably go deeper into it next week, but we probably don't have enough time in this episode for my colleague to mention one more thing in his mystery basket, but I just want to leave you with that cliffhanger. Next week, we will be diving into the Signature Reduction Program, the secret mystery army. So get your snorkels, get your goggles, get your shovels. You are going to go deep. Into the Pentagon. Remember, we did an episode many, many months ago, The Power of 108. Remember the Pentagon? There's 180 degrees on each angle. Or not 180, it's 108 degrees exactly. Yeah, each because angle. 108 equals 9. Yeah. 99999, nine, 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 which is 9 fives, which is 45. 45 times 2 is 90. 90 times side 2 is 180. <laughs> it gets deep. And 180 times 2 is 360, which leads us back to full circle. That's right. Right to you. And so, one 108 has always been a magical number throughout all history. But anyways, we'll be diving into that next week. I just want to give you guys that as a cliffhanger. The Signature Reduction Program. The Secret Army of the Pentagon. Anyways, so, leave us out with a bang. What do you have to give us some real good insight for the week to think about the chew on former cia pilot john lear claims that the moon is a spaceship <laughs> <laughs> this ain't the first time i've heard this i, I think you talked about this many minutes it's like the same time we were talking about the, the 108s i think you were talking yeah. about the, the moon is man-made, the yeah. man-made moon. We're sitting on 26s, I remember. Um, well, there's a little bit more information now. Um, this former CIA pilot, John Lear, not the one who invented the Learjet, but this guy claims the moon is a spaceship. Uh, it was made 15,000 years ago, not on Earth, on Jupiter. Jupiter is where the moon was made. When they made it, they sent it out to Earth to monitor Earth. So there's people living on this spaceship, the moon. So I have some questions. Yes. So this insinuates that all of the intelligent life form then is in Jupiter. Yes. Is that why Jupiter is just a big ball of gas? Yes. That's what they want us to think. It's actually a big ball of solid. <laughs> like a bowel movement. It's just solid. That's why it's brown. <laughs> and red. Yeah. And there's that hemorrhoids. big like permanent storm eye in the middle. That's the bongholio. <laughs> that's, that's where the fissures are. Yeah. Okay. So the magical men are all living on Mars. On, are on Jupiter, they built the spacecraft 
and they shot it towards Earth, and Earth grabbed it in its gravitational field, and it's remained in that field as a watcher over the Earth. Yeah, and according to this ex-CIA agent, there's 40 planets. In our solar system. Yes, and they all have intelligent life on them. Does Including Earth. Earth is one of them. So what would happen if we go to, if like a civilian, like just you and I went to the moon? Would we, would we get greeted warmly? Makes you curious, doesn't it? A little bit. But curiosity kills everything, so I don't know. I think it only kills the cats. I hope so. Cause I, I'm still alive. Yeah, me too. I have been a pretty curious little boy. <laughs> curious George. <laughs> See, it never killed George. That's oh, true, because he's a monkey. It only kills cats. Well, we could bring a cat with us and see if it kills the cat. If Maybe it'll get a cold welcome. Well, that's just me. We already know it's going to kill the cat. That's okay. And they can pry it out of my warm, sweaty hands. Do we have any more information about the spacecraft? Oh, that's all he wrote. What has been the response from the public and the military? Are they disqualifying him? Are they saying he's crazy? They're not saying a thing. Are they validating it, saying it's true? Yeah, they're silent. <laughs> I mean, like Birdman. <laughs> What's wrong here? <laughs> Something ain't right. I know it's the uh, <clears throat> the government's. Um, they're lying to us. You know, I think Rogan was on a show, and you know, he's always been a, a proponent for believing in alien life form. But I think he just came out saying. Because the government has been talking about UFOs so much, now he's changing his mind thinking that maybe there isn't aliens because why would the United States government want to actually confirm alien existence if their whole point is to not propagate that to the United States, to the public of the United States? It's all, it all started when Trump wanted to build that wall and they're trying to excommunicate all the aliens back to Mexico, of course. I think they're talking about extraterrestrial. <laughs> you look like Captain Kirk. <laughs> <laughs> Felt like it when I said it, too. <laughs> Felt all proper. <laughs> and you'll see your face when you watch the face. <laughs> you guys don't know how hard I have to try. <laughs> like, I try very hard to enunciate words to in my best ability, but. What about, what about Glizzy? Glizzy, was it called Glizzy Gobbler, Gobblers? Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to the gl Glizzy lovers. Yeah. A man can eat. A man's got to eat. He said he would eat it from the side. And some people say that's the best way to do it. Some people say the best way to get a full flavored bite is just to eat it from the side. Yeah. Now, to me, it's messy. You know, I don't like getting, like, when I eat a donut or a hamburger or something, you know how sometimes when you get too big of a bite, it's like gets the sauce and stuff on the sides. It's like instant. You got to instantly wipe it off with a with a, with a paper towel or whatever. <clears throat> it starts dribbling down your cheek. Yeah, yeah. it's like it bothers you. So that, that's why it's like I'd rather have a clean eat than, even if it tastes better, I'd rather have a clean eat. I don't like all that messiness. But some people do. Hey, eat their own. I anyways definitely use a lot of napkins anyways it was a jam-packed episode <laughs> full of goodies i know that you guys loved it we are so appreciative of everybody tuning in for this episode we will be discussing a whole load of new content next week so tune in don't tune out wait for the magical mystery wagon to appear next week as we travel back down the rabbit hole here at Alice's Bunker Hole. Oh, you're talking about like the old Oregon Trails game that... It used to be one of my I, favorite games. Yeah, I used to play that like in school yeah. on the, those old computers. Yeah, it used to be one of my favorite games. Yeah. Exclusively here at Toilet Time TV. Thank you guys for tuning in. Now you can tune out. Enjoy the rest of your day, evening, or existence. Thank you. God bless. We will see you guys in the next one.